Hello, prayer warriors. I've been listening to Father Chris Alar for many years now, and this is the most important teaching I've ever heard him discuss. Father Chris discusses the things we must do in order to avoid the worst chastisement by our Lord God in the history of mankind. In this video, Father Chris is telling us about a fully approved by the Catholic Church prophecy from Mother Mary. This prophecy is a dire warning from Mother Mary to Sister Agnes in 1973. Now, let's listen to a small part of the original video that's listed in the description below, and then we'll summarize the most important parts of Father Chris's teaching. But first, a terrible, terrible warning. We just read, but it get, there's more. Now remember, at Fatima, Mary warned of the possibility that nations will be annihilated. Mary told us, as her children, that basically, don't play with fire. We're playing with fire. We're playing with our souls. We didn't. Her warning was the most dire of any Marian apparition. This October 13th apparition at Akita, here's what Our Lady said. Let's look on your screen. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge. Greater than Noah. Can you imagine? Such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. The good as well as the bad. Spearing neither priests nor faithful. Why? Why would God do that? Because sin is communal. You sin or I sin, it doesn't affect just yourself. Your sin has negative consequences on me and my sin has neg negative consequences on you. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. That was the same message of the three days of darkness from Maria Taigi. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priests. Boy, do we need those prayers today. Let's keep going. The work and this is the next slide. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals. Huh. You see those correspondences between some of our U.S. cardinals? We got... Great ones standing up for the faith, Paprocki and Strickland. We got others abandoning the faith. Bishops against bishops. Please pray for Strickland, our bishop who's now being investigated because he simply went to support those protesting the mockery of Catholic religious life at Dodger Stadium. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres. I'm getting flack for doing the first Saturdays. Not bad, but I'm getting some. Churches and altars are sacked. We're seeing this. 
Just the story in Oregon where the guy broke into the Catholic Church, smashed the window, assaulted the volunteer, and desecrated the inside of the church and the altar, and the Department of Justice recommended no punishment. We've never yet had a hate crime against Christianity, but there's a million of them on there, out there on other causes. The church will be full of those who accept compromises. This is woke. And the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. We're seeing a lot of people leave their calling. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sorrow, Mary said. If sins increase in number and gravity, and this was 50 years ago, before we really had the full acceptance of gay marriage, transgenderism, it's gotten worse. If sins increase in number and gravity, which they have, there will be no longer pardon for them. Now, how could our lady say there's no pardon, no matter how grave the sin? Aren't all sins forgivable? How could Our Lady say there's no pardon for these sins? We're going to cover that in a moment. But first, a terrible, terrible warning. We just read, but it gets, there's more. Now remember, at Fatima, Mary warned of the possibility that nations will be annihilated. Mary told us, as her children, that basically, don't play with fire. We're playing with fire. We're playing with our souls. We didn't listen. And then Mary came and reminded us of her words at Fatima 50 years ago at Akita. So it was about, what, 50, 55, 56 years after Fatima. We're right in between. So you have Fatima. 56 years later, you got Akita. Now 56, 50 years later, we are here today. So she reminded us the message of Fatima here at Akita. Mary says that we need to do what we need to do. She tells us what we need to do to avert these chastisements. She keeps warning us and we're getting worse. What are they? She said there's only two ways, the rosary and reparation. That's why we're here today on First Saturday. What is First Saturday all about? The rosary and reparation. This is what it's about today. We are answering Our Lady's call. Please stay with us. Give God an hour and a half today, and when he comes, you'll be able to be rewarded by him for your faithfulness. Not chastised because of your apathy. To show the importance of this, Our Lady repeated the solution on the anniversary of Fatima on October 13th at Akita. She finished with three sentences that gives us the complete remedy and hope and a promise. What did she say? Please very much pray the rosary. I alone am able, am able still to save you from the calamities which approach. Now, why can Our Lady say she can save us from the calamities? Is she the Savior? No. But God is justice as much as he is mercy. And he's given us mercy way, way, way before his justice. 
He's given us 92 years of it so far, just through Faustina, and an entire history of mankind going back to the garden. He keeps warning us, but because God is justice just as much as he is mercy, his justice has to allow chastisement if we don't change. But Mary can intercede for us and she can help to quell that justice by her intercession. That's why she says, only I can help you. Those who place their confidence in me will be saved, not because she's the savior, but because she can pardon, go to you, intercede for a pardon for you from God the Father and her son. Now, how does this all work? All right, let's connect now these warnings with the solution. At Fatima on July 13th, <coughs> Our Lady prof <coughs> prophesies that if men do not refrain from offending God, another and more terrible war will begin during the pontificate of Pius XI. Actually, World War II did begin under Pius XI, not the 12th, when the Japanese invaded Manchuria. Because many people did not listen to her solution or put it into practice, her warning came true with World War II, the greatest demolition of life in human history. Our Lady said at Fatima, continue to pray the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary to obtain peace in the world and the end of the war because she can obtain it through her intercession, her perfectness. So this was Fatima. Now let's go to our next slide. She also said it at Akita. I alone am able to still save you from the calamity. She did not say save your soul. She's not the savior. But to save us from the calamities through her intercession. Today's wars from religious to economic, cultural, like woke. We're in the middle of a cultural war. On all areas, we're fighting a war. It shows we're not listening, because Mary said, if you follow this, the war will end. And World War II came. Now she's telling us to follow it, but the wars are raging. We don't have a world war yet. But we got a cultural war. We got an economic war. China's trying to destroy the US dollar. And, and that's, the de-dollarization is gonna be unbelievable. What's gonna happen from that? There's economic wars from that. There's religious wars. There's beheading of Christians in the Middle East because they won't uh, um, renounce their Christian faith. There's political wars going on, the cultural wars with woke. And so our lady's saying, these, you wanna end these wars? You gotta do what I tell you. And what we're doing today is what Mary told us. We can change it. I would not, I've said this before, given up house, business, fiance, for something that I didn't full 100% completely believe in 100%. And I believe I wouldn't be up here if I didn't. That the number of people on this live stream, we can make a difference. Just like Jesus or God told Abraham, when Abraham said, the Father or God, if I find 50 righteous people, will you spare the city? Yes. 40 righteous people, will you spare the city? Yes. 30 righteous people, will you spare the city? Yes. I said in a couple talks ago that there are a thousand more times people in the world today than the time of Abraham. There's about 8 billion today. At his time, there's about 8 million. That's a thousand times more today. 
And Abraham said, if I could find 20 righteous people, God said, I'll spare the city. All right, if the world's a thousand times bigger, we need 20,000. These live streams get 20,000 people. If you will all do this, who are watching, what, Father, what? Do what? The first Saturday, because it includes praying the rosary and asking for reparation. If you don't know how to do it, just be with us here after this talk, and we're going to do it. We can change this today. In her three apparitions at Akita, our lady warned us multiple times. Now, let's go down to slide 11. This was on August 3rd. This is her second apparition. Mary said, many men in this world afflict the Lord. I desire souls to console him to soften the anger of the Heavenly Father. I wish with my son for souls who will repair by their suffering and their poverty for the sinners and ingrates. When do we console the heart of Jesus? First Friday. The sacred heart. It ties together the big four devotions, first Friday and first Saturday, divine mercy, the precious blood, and I put in there the stations of the cross. Now at Fatima, remember that Our Lady called for reparation too. Now at Akita, she echoes this. Let's read our next slide. In order that the world might know his anger, the Heavenly Father is preparing to inflict a great chastisement on all mankind. With my son, I have intervened so many times to appease the wrath of the Father. Did you hear that? With my son. That means Jesus is begging us before the Father He's perpetually there with his wounds before God the Father, imploring us, and that's what happens at the Mass. Jesus is there on the cross, bringing his wounds to the Father. That's what happens at every Mass. Christ is perpetually present before the Father, showing his wounds to the Father. And she says, with my son, I have intervened so many times to appease the wrath of my father. There's Mary and Jesus basically in heaven holding each arm of the father, even though he doesn't have arms. I have prevented the coming of calamities by offering him the sufferings of my son on the cross. That's the mass. With every mass, we offer the sufferings of the son on the cross. I also offer his precious blood. You've heard me talk about the precious blood, the greatest of all devotions. One drop of his precious blood is enough to redeem all of humanity. And beloved souls who console him, that's us today, forming a cohort of victim souls. Are you suffering today? If you are watching, you are called to unite that suffering for this cohort of victim souls that are holding back the wrath of the Father. Pray, do penance, offer sacrifice. This will soften the Father's anger. You don't believe that this is justified? Read the diary, paragraph 299. This paragraph is the one I've talked about a couple times before. And what does Jesus say? St. Faustina wrote, On one occasion, my confessor told me to ask the Lord Jesus the very meaning of the two rays in the image of divine mercy. She said, Very well, I will ask the Lord. During prayer, I heard these words within me. This is Jesus talking to Faustina. The two rays, and I don't know if Brother Mark can show now the image of divine mercy, the two rays denote blood and water. The pale ray stands for the water, which makes souls righteous, and the red ray stands for the blood, which is the life of souls. These two rays issued forth from the very depths of my tender mercy. My agonized heart was opened by a lance on the cross. That's where the blood and water came from. Now listen to this. These rays 
shield souls from the wrath of my father. Happy is the one who will dwell in the raised shelter, for the just hand of God shall not lay hold of them. I desire that the first Sunday after Easter be the Feast of Mercy. So I was reading this one day in a talk, and Father Kaz was up here. And Father Kaz came in the back, and he heard me talking about the wrath of the Father. So I went down stairs, and we were down in the shrine, and Father Kaz, you know, we always said, the beauty of you guys being Marian helpers is, is you're, you're going to get the whole picture of our faith. I've said before, with Father Kaz, you're going to get all love, and with me, you're going to get all truth. <laughs> but we need both, okay? So I'm downstairs, and Father Kaz comes, he says, now, you may not want to focus on that, Father Chris, because that the wrath of the Father may mislead people to understand that he's some kind of ogre. And I said, no, Father Cass, it says it in the diary. We got to talk about it. Soul's got to wake up. And then in walked Father Seraphim. And I go, Father Seraphim, please tell Father Cass that we got to talk about the wrath of the Father. We got to hide in the rays of divine mercy because the wrath of the Father is going to smack us. And he says, no, no, no. And I'm like, Father Seraphim, it's right here. He's like, no, no, no. God the Father's wrath is not against the sinner. He pulled out a pen, said, sin is like a lightning rod. You ever see a lightning rod planted in the ground? It draws the lightning bolt. He said, sin is like a lightning rod. It draws the wrath of the Father. And the wrath of the Father is going to come to crush sin. And the problem is, if you're holding on to it, if you're holding on to pornography, promiscuity, abortion, woke, transgender, all these things you're holding on, teaching others to against the teaching of the church, if you're holding on to these sins, when God strikes the sin... It's like you're holding onto a metal rod if lightning strikes it. It's going to zap you. That's the wrath of the Father. He's not coming after you. He loves you. He's coming after the sin. And you better let go of it. You let go of the sin when God strikes at it. You're going to be, if you're holding onto it, you're going to be zapped. And then I said, but Father, what about the suffering of the innocent? They let go of the sin, but they still get zapped. And he said exactly what Akita said. He said, those are victim souls. If you're going to get zapped and you've let go of that sin, you are a victim soul. Maybe it's to offer up the sufferings for your, your loved ones who would be lost due to sin. Fascinating concept. This is the message of Akita. And so this is so important. So then during the October 13th apparition at Akita, in answer to all of these problems, Our Lady gave the reminder and the solution, the rosary and reparation. She also said, pray very much for the Pope, for bishops and priests. Although many have lost their way, the truth isn't lost, but we're burying it. Since your baptism, you have always prayed faithfully for them. Continue to pray very much, very much. The Akita Fatima connections are unmistakable. There was a great article by that John Haffert. He's the co-founder of the Blue Army. And he studied Akita. And he wrote that Bishop Edo, who had formally declared approval for the Akita apparitions, called Akita an update of Fatima and its promise. Now, go back to that sentence where Mary said that if the sins get so bad, God will no longer pardon us. How is that possible? Is every sin forgivable? Yes. Then how could our Lord or our Lady say that there could be no more pardon? So this article that... John Haffert wrote is very good. He says, let's consider this no longer pardon part of the Akita message. 
He said that in relation to sin, this is the sin against the Holy Spirit. The only unforgivable sin is sin against the Holy Spirit. What's the sin against the Holy Spirit? Final impenitence. What is that? Not asking for God's mercy. And he said, the only unforgivable sin is the sin against the Holy Spirit. Then he quoted John Paul II's encyclical on the Holy Spirit. Listen to what John Paul II said. It is because this non-forgiveness, please forgive, is linked as to its cause to non-repentance. In other words, to the radical refusal to be converted. People who don't want to hear the truth, don't want to accept the truth, don't want to live the truth. John Paul II explained that specific sins against the Holy Spirit are those committed by the person who claims to have a right to persist in evil. That is my right to take that life in my womb. It is my right to use contraception. I can't have another child right now. It is my right to not have to believe in a church. Well, John Paul II says, those are sins against the Holy Spirit, committed by people who claim to have a right to persist in evil, in any sin, and thus reject redemption. Please don't do that. All right, wrapping up, I'm running late. This halfert reminded us that today people are claiming the right to sin. I have a right to change my gender. No, we don't. I have a right to, to determine when life ends with euthanasia. No, we don't. He lists areas including abortion, artificial contraception, and denying God's teachings to children. That's probably the biggest. We're not teaching our children. This was in the early 1990s. Can you imagine what we would say about today? However, hope remains. Let's not lose sight of us. I'm giving you the dire stuff, but there's hope. What ultimately happens now depends, you've heard me say this before, on how we respond. That's why we're here today. I can't emphasize enough outside of the mass, these first Fridays and first Saturdays are the most important devotions we've got, along with divine mercy and the precious blood. Many don't know that, but Mary's telling us Mary can intercede to avoid or soften dire chastisement. This is what she said at Akita. She said, I alone am able to save you from the calamities. As I said, not Savior, but from the calamities because she can intercede God's justice. Those who place their confidence in me will be saved, not by her, through her. Let's look at our next slide. Mary told us at Fatima that she wins, God wins in the end, and her immaculate heart will triumph. What are we doing here today? We're praying for the triumph of the immaculate heart. That is the first Saturday. She came to Fatima and then to Akita because she wants us to join her in this battle, which will end in victory, but our job is to minimize the consequences of loss of souls, casualties. Considering what Our Lady asks us to do for our part, Hafford says that her messages were addressed, get this, especially to Catholics. From them, above all, there must be a response. To whom much is given, much is expected. If they refuse, they do not deserve to be spared the chastisement. Woe. We are held more accountable because we've been given the message as Catholics. But if we listen and follow her instructions, this does not have to happen. It can at least be lessened. What Our Lady said at Fatima goes for Akita. If you do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. Okay, I just wanted to recap a little bit. And uh, first of all, I wanted to say that this, this uh, prophecy is fully approved by the Catholic Church. Um, and that's very important. And the um, warning that took place in this prophecy, the warning that the fire will fall from the sky and wipe out great parts of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priest nor faithful, also hugely important.
If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. Another important point of this particular prophecy. But we can make a difference. The number of people that are watching both this channel and as, as well as Father Chris's channel is huge and we can definitely make a difference. So be sure to pray the rosary every day. As, it, as Father Chris said, pray for the priest, the bishops, and the pope as well as it's very important for us to, while we pray the rosary, I pray it with, in reparation for our sins and the sins of the United States. This is also a very important point that's been brought up in, in past teachings, as well as in this teaching. So also be sure to make some type of reparation if you can in the way of uh, fasting. Um, that you could one day a week you could uh, fast on bread and water, for example, or give up something else in reparation for our sins. So that's a very important point. And remember that if people that are watching this video today make reparations and pray the rosary every day, it will make a significant difference. And there's hope. And that's very important for all of us to do. So now let's... Uh, Take a couple of minutes and just pray the unity prayer together after this particular video. But also, always remember uh, to please uh, like and subscribe the channel and share it with a friend. And always remember that Jesus, I trust in you. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. 